Hi there. I just wanted to uh, record this quick video to show one of the solutions that uh, we built for a customer. Uh, in this case, the requirement was to move some data from Amazon Redshift into Snowflake. Uh, the challenge for us was the size of this data set. So in some cases, it was uh, over 40 million record mark. Um, and of course, to move this data set many times during the day uh, means that we will have to go uh, back to the to the basics, to the design board, uh, and look at an alternative process to the regular ELT uh, solution that we built for this uh, customer. Um, so in this video, uh, I will demo uh, what we did uh, and what features for these platforms are used. Um, and I think it was really grateful to see that cloud platforms provide basic features out of the box that allow us to move the data in and out um, very easily and with not much effort. So let's jump into the demo and go through the details. Let's just start by looking at the diagram that is going to uh, allow us to explain in more detail what we are trying to achieve here. Um, so on one side, we have Amazon Redshift, and that's the external data source. Um, and we have, of course, a Snowflake on the other side, and that's part of our enterprise data warehouse. So what we are trying to achieve here is uh, we have a large data set currently sitting on the Amazon Redshift platforms. Uh, and because of the number of records that we need to move into Snowflake, traditional ELT uh, techniques uh, are not so appropriate uh, for this case. So we are talking uh, data sets in the size of uh, millions of records, or like 30, 40, uh, and more millions of records that we need to move um, many times during the day. So to do that, we uh, are going to perform an unload process from Redshift. So the unload process is going to allow us to create files in the S3 bucket. Uh, depending on the size of the data sets, the files are going to be split in multiple files. The files will be uh, zipped uh, in order to reduce size of those files. Um, and at the end, we will have basically files available for us to read and import into Snowflake. On the other side, uh, as I mentioned, we have a Snowflake. So in that case, we are just going to execute a copy into table from one of the stages um, available in the Snowflake platform. Of course, that stage is going to be pointing to the same S3 bucket where we um, unloaded the files. Okay, so let's have a look at our environment. So here I have a SQL Workbench with an active connection to our Redshift instance. So I'll execute the top query just to get a sense of how big the dataset is. So I have these many records. So we have uh, 43 million records. Um, and as you can see by looking at the table name, this is forecast information. Uh, so forecast usually it's a large data set because it covers all the different uh, parameters that we need to include in the forecast such as number of stores, number of uh, items, uh, and of course, the time period that we are forecasting for. Um, so our objective is to move this data into Snowflake and allowing data analysts to basically deep dive into the data set and identify patterns and trends and all the different analytics that they want to run uh, using that data set. Okay, so we have 43 million records. Next is our uh, unload process. Um, so in this case, we are going to use the same query um, here, just changing a select a start so that we can include all the columns and of course with the parameters that uh, we used before for the row count. So we execute that and it should take, uh, I think, less than a minute to uh, download all of this information. Um, so here we have our S3 bucket waiting to get the files created. So this folder is, is empty. We just need to um, basically wait for the process to finish. I think uh, we approach this problem using this particular function uh, because we decided to look at alternative options to regular ELT processes. 
Um, and to do that, we had to go back to the very basic functions that comes uh, a part of the Redshift platform. Um, it was uh, interesting to see that Amazon provides a, a good way for people wanting to export data store, uh, in this case in Redshift, um, and then take those data sets and import them into any other tools um, where basically you, you want to have access to those data set to perform any type of analytics. So the unload process has finished. Uh, it took uh, 40 seconds. So now we refresh and we can see here we have the files. As I mentioned before, the process is splitting the files across uh, multiple files, in this case four, uh, and also zipping the files. So that way we can reduce the size of the information that we store in our S3 buckets. So next step will be for us to jump into Snowflake. Uh, here we can create a table. That's a table where we are going to be landing these um, different files. Um, and then after that, we can just go and copy the data from the buckets into Snowflake. So similarly here, um, I think as Snowflake has good uh, functionality in order to connect directly to an S3 bucket. Uh, that could be part of the internal or external staging areas in a Snowflake. Um, but for us as uh, developers and people always implementing these type of solutions is, is really interesting because we basically avoid um, building ETL or data ingestion processes um, when it's not required. So in these cases, the, the platforms help us to basically make data available faster so that um, business analysts or any business user in general can have a look at the data sets and start doing the work that, that they need. So the copy statement finish. Um, we have the same number of records here in, in a Snowflake. So we have the 43, 43 million records coming. Um, and then after that, basically they the data is, is now in a Snowflake and it will be made available to all the data consumers that we have in this organization. So from this point, you can continue with your regular data transformations, data preparation processes, and you can start using your data sets from a Snowflake.